Friends, I'm Jamie. And I'm Luke. And today we have a super full episode for you. We've got lots of educational things to teach you, as well as some things to show you that we have been working on. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about what's on my needles to start. And then we're going to talk about a few patterns that have been released. And finally, I want to end by teaching you how to read your yarn, to know what gauge your yarn is, what needles to work with, and just genuinely how to start a project. That we've stumbled across quite a few crocheters as well as knitters, uh, both beginner, intermediate, and advanced of all kinds on our channel and on our social media platforms. And I've been often, I've been asked the question, how do you know what to start with? How do you know what needles to use? What's your yarn? I tend to find a yarn that I love and I use that yarn as my inspiration. Uh, the nice thing is, is most yarns will give you a very basic beginning and it will tell you what the recommended needle size is, what your gauge is, and you can kind of go from there. And from there I build my um, project but some people will find the project they want to do and then the yarn to fit. Mm -hmm. And my goal today is just to kind of walk you through both ways and just how to read your, genu genuinely how to read your work before starting. Sounds be good. This. Um, so to start today, I really want to talk to you about the pattern that I am currently designing. <clears throat> I was the lucky inheritor of this beautiful wool. His mom, Joan, she is probably the best yarn connoisseur and she lives in smaller spaces, so we really get to reap the reward we there. We inherit a lot of yarn. I love Good it. Yarn. And <laughs> she is the nicest person in the world. She lets me store her yarn and also shop from her yarn. <laughs> so I truly, most of my yarn has either been gifted to me or long-term borrowed from the bins upstairs. Um, but anyway, this yarn is the most wonderful wool. I, I, it's just, it's called Silky Wool. And her name is, and I hope I'm saying this right, but Elspeth Lavold. It's called Silky Wool, and it's a blend of 65% wool and 35% silk. And it is just, it's so fun. It's fun to work with, but it also, once it's gone through its wash and in its dry cycle, the yarn blooms. And I don't know how to really explain that other than thinking of a flower having a bud and blooming into something. Your yarn will often bloom into something. I'm pretty sure a lot of acrylics don't really have that bloom cycle, but anything that has a good wool content does. That's interesting. The wool soaks it up and becomes a whole new characteristic. So if you think it's fun to knit with it, wait till you wash it and wear it, because it does, it takes on a whole new fun characteristic. But this silky wool, I had such a field day, and as silly as it sounds, I had to grab a color I'm actually not using because I got on my my yarn winder and uh, I just started winding skein after skein after skein, and then I threw all my bands away. So I'm actually, it's still silky wool, but it's a different color. But anyway, this sweater is using the silky wool. The sleeves are worked using a raglan increase along with lace and directional stitches. And it's just really beautiful how it's kind of worked out. And I was able to give a little bit of a necklace design too. So you have these increases both on the front and the back to show off your shoulder and just kind of really have a little bit of feminine characteristics here. And the same matching small pearled uh, laced necklace right here. So it's really going to be so cool. And I'm almost at a separation between the dark brown. I'm going to put some pops of color down here because I'm a sucker for color work and I, I really have a hard time segregating my knitting and color work and I try to throw it in wherever I can. So my body is gonna have some color work, but also a few inches on each sleeve. Mm. And it's gonna end in the light. Mm. So it's just gonna be a really cool pattern when it's all done. Yeah, I really like that sweater. And I actually like, um, I've seen you do a lot of lace before. 
uh, but often it can be a little too much and I think like the characteristic yeah. of the sweater is more like it's light and airy and you know this yeah. is much cooler because there's substance to it but you have that's actually very attractive you know how you see through that like lace part and stuff so I think that's cool well thank you and I, mm -hmm. I do have to forewarn I love wearing lace so wait I that's a pattern you designed I did oh, I nice. did um, again, I, I love wearing lace, but I can't stand knitting it. So I try, I, I have a few sweaters that I have knit quite a bit of lace into, and I love them. But most of my work has lace, but as an accent or a decoration, not as a, a showpiece or the center of it revolving around lace. But um, I am writing this pattern. Most of the time I do one of two things. I either choose to find the pattern and I knit the sweater and then write the pattern or I'll write the pattern then knit the sweater but this I'm kind of taking it a little differently. I am writing it knitting it, writing it, knitting it. So what I did was I knew I wanted a raglan increase. I knew I wanted lace. So I started by writing the pattern and the yoke and working the first, I think it was like the first eight or 10 rows in the lace to make sure that the pattern was written well. And then I wrote until I got to the separation of the arms. And then I knit to the separation of the arms. Now I have written to where the body goes down. I have some short rows to kind of give the back a nice long <clears throat> duck tail. I like my front to sit right about my belt line, but the back to have a nice duck tail. So, you know, if you have to tie your shoe or bend over or something, you're not showing off everything back there. It kind of <laughs> it kind of gives you a little bit of... Uh, leeway but I have written now to the bottom of the solid color I am writing the rest of the pattern to have the actual pattern the color work pattern and then I'll knit that and then again I'll knit the sleeves one at a time and add the color work it's it's a really it's really fun but gosh this wool is I <laughs> full admission yeah. I found myself staring at this yarn as if I was just in a daze and it's a beautiful color when you look at it when you first look at it it's brown it has little flecks of colors little tweeds that pop in and out but when you really get in there closely it almost glitters have you ever seen dew in the morning mm -hmm. when the Sun hits it and it's just like a whole bunch of glitter sure this yarn is like gluey I'm sorry dewy glitter it just, I love it. I, I can't stop staring at it. My only regret is I'd only have enough for this sweater and maybe an accessory to go along with it. I, I'm gonna have to order a lot more. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but it does, it blends with all different colors. I've just, I've had so much fun working with it. Um, the colors I'm using, the brown is called Walnut and the cream color is called honey. So conveniently, I have named my pattern walnuts and honey. Um, again, I should, I should be done. I, I try to finish my writing and run it through testing, but I'm probably, I'm feeling confident enough with the way the pattern is working out, the numbers are working out. I'm probably gonna push it through testing a little early. I'm gonna make sure I knit one full sleeve and then I'm gonna put it through testing while I knit the other sleeve. I like to knit along with my testers because I, it's fresh in my mind. Mm. I don't lose track of what I've done. I have done sweaters that I've designed and then tested a month or two later and someone will ask a question and while I remember knitting and writing and I remember the numbers, I don't always remember the relevance to their question. So I don't want to lose track of that because this is a really special yarn. It's so drapey. It's so fun with the lace, Drape. the color. Yeah, it's um, silk has a wonderful way of draping. No matter how you, I mean, it's just going to kind of, it's going to move with your body. So this sweater actually was intended to have a little bit extra positive ease, meaning it's going to be a little bigger because it'll kind of drape and follow along the contours of your body. It'll cool. be beautiful. All right, I see. Um, this one that I'm wearing is it's drapey, but only because it's heavy. It wasn't meant to be flowy and elegant and beautiful, but this silky wool, no matter how, I mean, it just, you want to just smuggle <laughs> it. 
It's just, I, I really, if I could shove it in a pillow at night and snuggle it, I would if I wasn't afraid of pillow in my sweater before I've worn it. Oh, but boy. I am absolutely thrilled with this pattern. I think it's gonna be a really fun thing to knit and wear, and I don't normally knit more than one of the same project, but this might be one of the exceptions. Yeah, that would look better in a light mm -hmm. green or a light gray color, but I appreciate what you've done there. And <laughs> had the Joan bin had a light green <laughs> or another color, I probably would have knit that as well. Um, I suppose I'll have to put my big girl pants on and order some for myself. <laughs> So, poor Luke. Uh, I've picked on him for the past several episodes for procrastinating. He's constantly casting on and slipping his needle out or dropping his needle. I think he says that because he doesn't truly want to fulfill a knit project. Uh, I'm joking. Life. I'm joking. But no, um, for poor Luke. It has been, we have been in like snowmageddon here. It has been cold. It's yeah. been below freezing points. Yeah, it I had the tractor out the other day. We made a huge igloo for the girls. Uh, yeah, we've had to plow snow. It was so bad I almost couldn't get it plowed. It took me like three separate times of going back out. That was really bad and it's been very cold. Zero degrees is close. It's been really frigid. Yeah. Um, so needless to say, I've been knitting because I like to sit by the fireplace and knit, but poor Luke, he went out he was shoveling and he slipped on a nasty patch of ice and didn't even know it was there so he slipped and he just ate it he tore up his whole thumb his knuckles are banged up his arms banged up his back's banged he's so he's kind of a mess so yeah my hand hurts a little bit but i have been working on something uh, it may not look like much to you now but we'll show you up close um i've actually been working on this little headband um it's going to be for ava my oldest daughter and it is done in this really cool variegated yarn that's purple, blue, uh, it's got some hints of green in it, some teal, some different things like that. I really am enjoying knitting it because number one, I'm glad to be using these needles again. Uh, it's these four squares from Knit Picks. I really like those. Uh, but also, uh, this yarn is a DK weight. Uh, it's fun to knit with. It seems to be knitting really easily. I love the color of it. It's extremely attractive, which for me, I like to hold my attention on a project. It's important that I like the color of the yarn too. Um, and it is made by Madeline Tosh. I don't have much experience with that, but um, this is a blend. Am I right, Jamie? It is. Is. And unfortunately, I don't know the name of the, the yarn, the color of the yarn. It came from our stash yarn. And <laughs> what happened was this winter, Ava had requested a pair of fingerless mitts and she wanted blue and orange. And so I found both of these blue and orange yarns upstairs in what we call the scrap bin. Um, and it was enough to do the gloves and some leftover. And so he's using the leftover of the leftovers. <laughs> so it's the yarn that just keeps on giving. But it is, it's metal and tosh. You cannot go wrong. She, the company is just beautifully put together. Um, their yarn, he's using a super wash. So naturally it's going to have this beautiful shiny sheen to it. It has these beautiful elegant colors. When you dye a super wash, it absorbs these colors and it just, it shines without effort. It's really cool. Even mm -hmm. in, uh, we don't have the best lighting in here in terms of like seeing for knitting, it's done for video. And uh, the colors are still, they really pop. They look really good. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm pretty blown away by that. All of the Madeline Tosh colors blend nicely. So it's almost a given if you're gonna get something on one color spectrum, it's gonna somehow match the other color spectrum, mm -hmm. just depending on how you use it. But it's a special yarn. It's a really fun yarn and it's gonna wear well. Super washes will generally wear well. They don't pill as much because, you know, a, most of the time they're chemically treated to um, soften the fiber of oh. the wool down. The reason people like superwash is because it's so soft, but because it's actually been almost plastic coated. Oh, cool. it's, it does not. It's like obviously... a, a Teflon coated fishing line <laughs> or something yeah, like that. But not, it doesn't feel like fishing line on the well, right side. No, no, it's but soft. Yeah. <laughs> what happens is when you have wool, wool has these little almost. Um, like, have you ever seen a, uh, a Christmas tree drawn and it's like all these little things? Um, <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> it's the Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Superwash 
kind of squeezes those little tufts or those uh, spare ends of hair or wool down and it coats it. It creates this coating so it doesn't feel itchy. You don't feel those little bristles of the wool on your skin. Mm -hmm. It takes the itch down, but because it's been chemically treated and plastic coated, it loves dye. It creates the most vibrant colors. It's it's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Take a look and tell me here. Let me crunch some up so mm -hmm. you can see it. What do you think? How am I doing there, buddy? Oh, look at your stitches. You're doing good. Thanks. I'm yeah. pretty consistent at least. You are. The only thing I caution you is you tend to, not bad, you tend to knit larger. So some people, I tend to knit, um, I suppose I tend to knit tighter on color work and looser on stockinette. And that is pretty normal for people, but he is a looser knitter. So what he would have to, if he was going to work according to a swatch requirement, his stitches are just a little bigger than mine might be. So he will have to remember that maybe he would go down a needle size if he were working. The headband isn't such an issue. Cowls aren't such an issue. Um, hats, you know, I mean, you don't want to wear a tarp on your head. But <laughs> what was that? It's I, had, I didn't want to lose drop my stitch, so I had to lift my arms. You look like to... you're fishing. <laughs> hey, I do what works for me. <laughs> But so if you are knitting a sweater or knitting a hat, you do want to maintain your gauge. You know, you don't want to knit something so big that you're wearing a big bell on your head or wearing a huge tent for a sweater. Yeah. I mean, gauge does really matter for some things. I remember but, when Jamie first started knitting, well, not even that, like well into her knitting career, uh, she'd come out and be like, I just knit this whole sweater. It took me like a month and it's like, the sleeves go from like here, like a like a triangle down, or the bottom's like clearly off-centered, or the neckline's weird, or one of the sleeves is up higher than the other one. I'm like, wow, it's really good. So, so one of my early sweaters, it was, Joan had recommended me knit a simple stockinette sweater. And it used a few pearl stitches going down the sleeve for decoration. Um, it really was not an intricate pattern, but it was my first segue into sweater knitting. The problem with that was it's a whole new language. It's not knitting flat back and forth. It's not just knit to the end, turn your work, knit to the end, or knit, purl. This was doing a knit, don't twist your stitches. Connect them in the round, don't twist your stitches. Add a right leaning, add a left leaning, add something here, add pearls there. And to me now, it's it's a total default. I understand these things, I can go with it. But at the time, I was lost and I was just swimming in the dark, you know. It, it was just, I thought I was cruising. And I don't like to knit sweater, I'm sorry, I don't like to try on my sweaters as I'm knitting. You just I, roll with it and then hope you can knit I it correctly. I do. <laughs> I have knit, I, I'm probably, in my early days, I probably knit one and five wearable, not successful, but wearable things. Yeah. And I wore them as ugly as they were because I was determined to wear my work. But that first sweater, it was supposed to be a simple squared body with two sleeves coming out. <laughs> And it looked like a parallelogram with like some. Have you ever seen the movie The Lorax? Uh, the Thneed? You were so upset. Oh. Too. You were so upset. And I all like tried not to laugh, but it was hard. Oh, it was really hard. It was. It was awful. But you know, it, once you start to get into <laughs> the language and learn how. I, that's why I always, every time I knit something, I try to learn something with it. I never want to knit the same thing because I always want Help. to learn. What happened? I got a big gap. <laughs> what if, what if you, what it, what? What well, did you do? Okay, let me explain. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay. He's got an enormous gap and there's nothing wrong with his gap, but can you, just by looking at it here, guess what happened? It's the end of the row, but why is it so loose is what I'm saying. He never put a stitch marker to keep an eye on that. If you put a stitch marker, marking the end of the old row and the beginning of the new, you know it's coming. 
he's only on his first round so it shows a big gap because this tail is, is That's the fully third loose. time around it's oh well we can't win them all that's literally my third set of stitches on. It's okay, it's okay. Just keep knitting. It will work itself out. Look, you have closed the gap almost entirely. You really don't see it. See how that worked? Yeah, I guess. You're all right. Just keep yeah. on going. You got it. I like this yarn. It's super nice. It held up for you while Jamie was talking. But you can see that like shiny appearance to it. And it is, it's so soft. It is. I it's, like it. It's really, it's, it's one of those colors that shows a different hue in every room or in a different light. You know, it might be more blue in one room, more purple in another. Yeah, it's I agree. Just shiny. It's, Color it's temperature really... of the light would have a lot to do with it. Depending if you're in a daylight situation or mm -hmm. if you're under a warm light inside of a house, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it would change. Yep. All right, enough about my little uh, headband project. What uh, what have you had going on? Didn't you have a pattern release? I actually have. I have released a handful of patterns lately, and um, coincidentally, they're all cowls. I, I typically don't wear a lot of cowls, so I don't like to knit a lot of cowls. Um, I, I love to knit them because they're a fun way to play with colors and your project grows so quick and it's it's a very you gratifying. Can do it in one night. Yeah, it's yeah. very gratifying to see something. Casting on is always the fun. Playing with the yarn, casting on, seeing things build, and then you want to move on. So cows yeah. are great because you can cast on, you can play with colors, you can watch it grow so fast. Or a headband. And you're done. Or a headband. Um, so I actually, I knit a couple of cows. Um, I knit my poppy cow, which I believe we showed in the last episode, yep. um, but it has actually been published since then. I also knit a cow for my sister. My sister tends to only wear black, black, and black. some shade of black. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she she really she does like a lot of blacks, creams, and grays. And so I wanted to do something special for her because she's always doing special stuff for us. Yeah. I mean, she's really she's just a kind-hearted person. Would do anything for anybody. So I wanted to give something back. And she's a hard person to guess what to knit for because she's. She loves what she loves. She's she has a great fashion sense as well. Yeah. So uh, designing something and yeah, the color spectrum. She's gonna be always picky. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So anyway, I knit a cow and I just released it. It's called Winter's Tide Cow. With the Winter's Tide Cow, I really was playing yarn chicken and I have been doing a lot of that lately. I would never do that with a sweater. What do you mean? Um, so I went into the scrap bin again because I don't tend to knit a lot with grays or darks or blacks. I love color. I lately have done a lot of lighter colors, but I love color. But I knew there was some creams and grays and blacks and whatnot in the bin. So I went shopping upstairs and I came across one skein of each. They're totally opposite spectrums. I had one skein of a patterns and I had one skein of a nice super wash kind of wool blend. Um, and I really was not sure how they would react together. The wool blend was more of a DK, but a little bit heavier, meaning my stitches were going to be slightly closer and smaller than the cream one. The cream was a worsted. This was a DK, but almost a worsted. So I knew they would complement, but they would work a little against each other, but that could work in my benefit. So yarn chicken is when you're knitting something and it's a battle of finish the pattern before the yarn runs out. And I literally have, if I had to guess, I might have five yards of this wool left. I mean, it, it barely it made close. it to the end. But I knew if I had to cut something short, the pattern was adaptable and I was writing it so I could add or decrease or increase where and as needed. So I didn't have to uh, eliminate, I didn't have to add anything. It really worked out as it was intended to. But anyway, um, this wool was fantastic. It worked nicely. I don't have the cow with me, so I'm gonna have to include a picture because I've already given the cow to Shelly. But it's it was a fun knit, it knit up in I don't know, three hours at most. It was a really fun way to use up the extra yarn. So that was the Winter's Tide Cow. 
I also, as I said before, have released the Poppy Cow. Um, anyone who follows us on Instagram will start to see some promos. I am going to do 12 weeks of giveaways to all of my subscribers. So if you aren't a subscriber, please follow us on Spring Stitch Knits on Instagram and do so. And tag a friend, do whatever you want to do, but all you have to do is find the post like the post, be a follower, and if you want to comment a friend or tag a friend, that would be great. The next giveaway is actually going to be all of the yarn and the pattern included with the Poppy Cow. So it has the cream, the cinnamon twist, and the slate. It's kind of like a slate stone color. Um, so it's all the yarn needed to knit the Poppy Cow plus the pattern and the pattern can be either printed or digitally sent or however um, but that's kind of exciting that should be up next week for our giveaway um, right now we're currently running a giveaway on a free pattern for a cardigan it's called my secret garden cardin cardigan and it's using steaks and a nice color work yoke but again for the next 12 weeks we're going to do some giveaways so please like and follow us so you don't miss anything. And don't forget we have our 500 subscriber giveaway here on our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, take a moment, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you'll get notified when we release the latest content and you'll also be entered automatically to win that bundle we're giving away. So as I was saying, this week has been a really fun week for me because I tend to be a very selfish knitter. I wanna knit, I wanna wear it, and I wanna use it up but I have felt like I needed to knit for other people. So I knit um, the Winter's Tide cow for my sister, but I also knit a pair of gloves for my mom. I knit about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, I knit a, a sweater uh, with birds on it. And my mom, from the day I knit it and wore it, had loved it. Well, she inherited it a couple of months ago. She wanted it really bad, so I said, please take it. If I want it, I'll borrow it, or I'll just need another one. Gosh, has she just raved about that sweater, and I felt so thankful to be able to knit something that someone loves. You know, when you spend all this time knitting something, and someone says, wow, I love it, you just really, you feel great. You feel like job well done. Yeah. So I wanted, I had a little bit of yarn left from that sweater and I had enough to knit her a pair of fingerless gloves. I knit myself a pair of fingerless gloves and she has talked about wanting a pair herself. So I thought what a great opportunity to use up the extra skein of wool. So again, these are different weight yarns. The body is in more of a sport weight yarn where the accent color is more of a DK, but it really worked well. Um, I incorporated a set of birds on these mitts also. So it really complemented and contrasted the sweater that she wore. The mitts have right along the cuff, there is a little bit of um, a tweedy design worked with pearls and little branches, directional branches, and then there's a segregation and then the birds bloom on the wrist. Um, the birds are on the front of the hand, there's a special design on the back. And again, I can't show you these because I gave them to my mom, but we'll include a picture. And this pattern will also be released, I believe right around the 1st of February. Um, it was really a fun knit and again, I think I knit them in a matter of one evening and one afternoon. So it wasn't any more than three or four hours. They just knit up so fast. They're pretty standard shape. They are fun to knit. And again, it's just so instantly rewarding. I forgot how fun it is to knit something that you can be proud of and wear immediately or see and play with immediately. So what I did was I knit one glove and I washed and soaked and dried while I was knitting the other one. So I was able to kind of like rub the yarn and play with the yarn and, and hold the mitten while I was knitting the other one. And I got to watch what one looks like and what one will be. It was just a fun process. Mm. So this wool has been pretty fun to work with. It was very soft, um, neither of which are super wash but they are treated in such a way, they're just so enjoyable. Um, they were soft from the beginning, 
but this was the Nobelese, but this one was just so fun. This one, this cream one, really bloomed when it washed. This Nobelese, it, it does bloom a little bit, but it is a really defined spun wool, meaning it, it already really has its characteristics when it's spun. But this was a looser, uh, looser spun wool, so when it's soaked, it really wants to just kind of grow a little bit and, and grow into what it was knit. So they just, oh gosh, they became, it felt like down. When it was washed and dried, it felt like you were slipping your hand into like this silky down gauntlet. It was so nice. So anyway, my mom inherited those and I think she's pretty happy. Um, well, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, she had a wonderful smile and I felt great about it. So look for that pattern February 1st. Winter's Tide pattern is already out there. Poppy pattern is out there. We have giveaways. We have so much fun. Okay, so one last thing I want to talk to you today about is how do you know what you're working with? Um, gosh, there are all these terms there. I ask you. Yeah. Well, you can. I I'd respond. But um, so you have lace weight, you have sport weight, you have DK, worsted, bulky, Aaron. There's all of these different types of yarns. And then you have, you know, US and metric needles. To, to wrap your brain around one thing is it's just so much to take in. So most yarn companies should have on their ball bands instructions. So for example, this is Madeline Tosh. Uh, this is their Rios brand. Not that that matters, but Madeline Tosh uh, has already printed on their tag that this is worsted weight yarn that you can, if you were to knit a swatch, and most knitters understand the concept of a swatch, you choose, uh, usually it's about a four inch square, almost as if you were qu a quilting patch. So you knit a four inch square, and then you're gonna count your stitches, and you're gonna count your columns. And that's gonna kinda give you a gauge. That gauge will tell you how big or how small your garment is. That is your keystone to all the patterns. So if you want to work a sweater or a hat or a cowl, and they say your gauge is an 18 stitch gauge, you want to get your four inch square to have about 18 inches across. If you're in the ballpark, it's okay for some things, but if you're working with a sweater, you know, a nice tailored sweater, you want to be right on with that because that gauge gives you the whole concept. So this says that it's 18 to 22 stitches. So you've got about a four stitch leeway and then below it it's saying that you can either have a US size 7 through a size 9. So that's kind of, that will at least give you the ballpark of where to work. They have taken all the guesswork out. This is a worsted weight yarn. They said this is a worsted weight yarn. Some yarns don't tell you what weight the yarn is, but they do give you a gauge. They do give you a needle. Oh, Luke's doing My that. hand's cramping. Oh, <laughs> I'm not poor used Luke. To this. We might let Luke discontinue knitting for the night. He's gonna <laughs> break break another thing. Um, I'll wrap it up. So again. Um, Malabrigo has taken all the guesswork out. They're saying you have a worsted weight, you have this needle size, you have this gauge. Some knitting skeins will come, and this poor skein, it has been in the barrel for quite a while, so <laughs> excuse its appearance. What matters is what's on the ball band. So on the back of your ball band, you're going to have a set of instructions, and on here I have what looks to be little needles. And then to the other side, I have what looks to be a little grid sheet. The needles are saying that this is going to require or knit best using a US size six needle or four millimeter, uh, four millimeter needle. It's also showing on the grid sheet that I'm gonna have 22 stitches 
versus 30 columns. And that is also going to be in a four inch gauge. Um, this will give me the basis. So I'll know that I want to start with this wool. I like this wool. So I'm going to, based on their recommendation, start with the size six. I'm going to try to get a 22, but if I start to knit what looks to be like 20 stitches, I might know that that's bigger than their recommended. My stitches are growing, they're a little bigger, so I want my needle size to be smaller to shrink the stitches down. Mm -hmm. So if they're recommending a 22 and I'm knitting a 20, I'm going to drop down a needle size. But if I'm knitting like a 24 and they're recommending a 22, I want to grow my needle size to make my stitches bigger. So I, I guess that would be my recommendation. I tend to like the yarn and I want to build my pattern off of the yarn. One other thing I would recommend, and this is just preference, um, and I'm going to show you mine versus Luke's so maybe you'll get the difference. If you're going to work a dark yarn, pick a light needle so you can see each stitch that's on your needle. It really helps. Poor Luke. He is knitting a, a blue purple yarn on a set of blue purple needles. They really kind of get lost and it makes your eyes kind of hurt. Yeah. So, I mean, if you have great lighting and you're not particular, who cares? Use whatever needles. If you like the needles and the yarn follows, great. I am thankful and lucky enough to have options. I have, here, you want to take your yarn? I have uh, nickel needles. I like to use my metal needles. I love how yarn slides up and down. Wooden needles. He likes wooden needles because your stitches don't go whoop and slip off. I like it because I like to speed knit. I want to go, 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 go. I don't want to have to sit there and shove my yarn up. But I like metal needles because very few yarns get lost in the color of the needles. Um, but just, just think about the color of your yarn versus the color of your needles. <laughs> oh, Scooby, my boy. So the color of your yarn versus the color of your needles. And check your ball bands. It's always a good way to start. The next episode, I really want to talk to you about meeting your gauge and finding the right size for you. How to make your gauge swatch fit your body shape and how to know what to kind of construct from there. So. Uh, yeah, thanks again to everyone, as always, for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate having you as our subscribers. Again, don't forget to hit subscribe, enable those notifications, and you'll automatically be entered in our contest to win uh, the giveaway bundle that we have going on. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below the video. We love interacting with you, and uh, we love talking about what we're going to do on our next episode. So we'd love it if your ideas were a part of that. We'll see you next time. Bye.